Greetings again, Trumpas. Hello. This time we're going to talk about attacks, making attacks. And there is a fair bit to get through. Uh, we're probably going to split this into at least two videos. There might be more on the subject. Well, okay. There will almost definitely be more on the subject. But anyway, uh, this one specifically, this one's going to cover ranged attacks. I'm uh, going to jump, jump right in and start talking about it. All right. So, when you're going to make a ranged attack, this includes your guns, through anything you throw, this includes archery bows, that is. Anything like that, if you're going to, if it's going to be other than you holding something and hitting something, then it's probably going to be a ranged attack. Alright, now I'm going to throw this up. It's a pretty straightforward one here. This is the roll you make to make a ranged attack. It is your reflex stat, plus the weapon skill. So if you're using assault rifle, the rifle is the weapon skill. If you're using a AMT 2000, then it's going to be your handgun skill. Whatever it is, plus the die 10 you rolled. That's the that's pretty pretty easy on that part, right? We can handle that. All right. <laughs> now your the way the book rolls, and I'm gonna, I'm going to throw in my own total sense here, of course, as I usually do, in a few places, but. The way the book, the core book, is you are rolling against a set number based on your distance from the target. So this is, for example, we, uh, there we go. Now these are the hit numbers. Depending on how far away you are from your target, you have to beat that, that previous one. When you hit that, you rolled your reflex stat, your weapon skill, your die 10, you get a total. It has to be a uh, meter beat these numbers in order to hit your target. Now, to give you a little more detail on that one, right? Here we go. Uh, mo the average handguns are going to be a 50 meter range. Submachine guns, 150 meter range. Shotguns, 50 meters. Rifles, 400 meters. If you're throwing an object, you can throw it 10 meters times your body stat, minus 10 meters if the thing you're throwing is. Uh, less than one kilogram. So if you've got a really lightweight, as you know, if you throw something that's really lightweight, it tends to not go as far as, as if you're throwing a tennis ball, baseball, or whatever, right? So that's the specs there. And a little more detail on those hit numbers. These are the same numbers in the last uh, last screen, but leave you a little more what it means. What is point blank? Point blank is touching to one meter. If you're within a meter, about three feet, of your target, you're considered a point blank your target to hit them is extremely low, as, t as a 10, a relatively easy to hit number. A close is a quarter of the range, so whatever the range. If you're using a handgun, uh, that's what, 12 and a half meters. If you're for it to be close range, your target number is a 15. Medium range, half, half of your long range, <laughs> uh, which is a 20 target. Long range is the full range. So if you're if you're shooting a handgun and your target is around that 50 meter mark, your target number to hit is is quite a higher, 25, quite a bit higher. All right, extreme range. If you're double your you're trying to use a handgun at 100 meters from your target, then your target number is 30. Now that's why the way the basic rules work for the most part, power characters and power builds and min max and characters and stuff aside. Um, a 30 is a very, very difficult number to hit. Uh, but those are your target numbers, depending on what you're shooting, what your, how far away your target is, etc. Okay. Um, the uh, covers that stuff. Modifiers. There are a boatload of potential modifiers. Now it depends on your ref. Some refs, like most of the time when I'm playing, when I'm refing a game. I don't try to look up and figure out every little modifier that may or may not apply to what you're trying to do. I, I usually do not do that. Um, but you can. Absolutely can. I'm going to pull up the modifiers chart here for you. There it is. Like I said, it's a long freaking list. Depending on what is going on affects how hard or easier it might be to shoot your target. Okay. So if you've got a moving target and their reflexes are a greater than 10, that gives you a minus 3 to your hit number right there all by itself. And so you can see from the chart, if you have a moving target reflex is greater than 12, a minus 4, 
reflex is greater than 14, you add minus 5. There's a bunch of other things here. If before your initiative, now I've got a whole other video on how initiative works, but if you declared a fast draw snapshot, kind of sort of pretty much comes up to the same thing, uh, you're going to have a minus 3 to your hit. You get a bonus on the initiative, but you get a negative to hit because you're trying to draw really fast, right? You get your ambush bonus. I've got another video on that. We've talked about it. Aimed shot. If you're trying to hit a specific body location. Now, this is a minus four on this chart. What I usually frequently do just on my games, I'm going to do a minus three for the major body parts. If you're trying to hit an arm or a leg or a head, that's just a minus three. If you're trying to hit a specific body part, now it depends. So if you're trying to hit the left eye. You're trying to shoot out that cyber eye, keep it from recording you, or something like that. Uh, you're going to be, in my games, you're going to be at least a minus 5 or minus 6, possibly more. Again, uh, if your target's moving, you know, if it's a moving target and they've got a high reflexes, you could be a minus 10 or something, right? Okay, well, I'm not going to go over every one of these things. That would take a long time. But you get the idea. There's a whole lot of modifiers. They are all in the core book for you to check out further, okay? So... All those things affect your, uh, your your attack number, which then you compare to that to hit number to see if you've actually successfully hit your target or not. Now, there's a couple of things you can do on your end to, uh, to increase your chances. Okay, One of them is you can aim. Aiming is a plus one per round that you aim up to three rounds is the way I've always played. Yeah, that's the way it says in the core, but I kind of want to check my notes. Um, if you aim, in other words, you're taking aim on your target. You're controlling your breathing. You're just watching. You're holding that aim. You're holding that point on the target for a full round. That gives you a plus one. On the second round, you could take your shot at a plus to one. If you hold that aim for two full rounds, okay, 3.2 seconds a round, combat rounds we're talking about. Third round, you get a plus three. That'd be on the so in other words, if you hold that aim for three rounds, on the fourth round you take your shot, you get a plus three because you've been aiming that entire time. Okay. A couple of other things. A critical success. If you roll natural ten on your die, you it's it's an exploding die. You can roll another ten, another die ten, and you add that to your target roll or to your attack roll. So you know, you roll your attack roll, you get your reflex stat, your skill number, and your die roll, but you roll a natural 10. You roll another 10, and you add it in. So, just to throw out an example, if you had a skill of 4 in rifle, you were shooting a uh, assault rifle, uh, Finral or something. Uh, for skill of 4, your reflexes are an 8. That's 12. You roll a 10. Okay. 8, and you got 12, plus your natural, plus your nat 10, that's 22, but you get to roll another die 10. Say you roll a 5. Now you got a 27 to hit, so you got up there pretty quick, even though your skill in the, in the weapon isn't very high. Now, depends on the ref if they want to roll alt unlimited exploding dies or just once. In some cases, you could, if you roll a second die natural die 10, you roll a third die 10 and add it in. You roll a third natural 10, you roll a fourth one and add it in. Um, you can get some crazy numbers, but it's those things that happen. It happens that you get just extremely lucky, which is another comment. You can add luck to these shots. I got a whole other video on the stats on luck. We can talk about that. that that's in that other video to talk about it, but we'll go on. That's another thing you can do to increase your chances of success. All about success. It's also all about failure. A natural one means you have fumbled. You have screwed up that shot. Now, I believe I do have... Do I not have the fumble chart? Where is it? I apologize, peoples. I thought I had that one ready for you. I'm going to go see if I can pull that up while I am talking here real quick. Um, the uh, fumble chart, it goes over, well, what can happen when you make a serious mistake uh, when you roll that one. And yes, that's the way this game is. That's part of why this game is so blasted deadly. Um, because if you roll a natural 10, you got a 10% chance here. We're talking about a 10% chance. There's the chart. Oh, I hate to cover up, cover up our buddy, but I'm going to because I want to pull this up for a second. All right. Um, there you go. 
the fumble chart from the color book. We'll bring we'll we'll take that off for a minute while I'm talking. So yeah, ten percent. If you roll a natural ten, you got a ten. You get, that's ten percent chance to roll that natural ten to get an exploding ten and have a crazy to hit no, attack number. If you have a if you roll a one, ten percent chance of rolling a one, right? And that's a critical fumble. Now I'll do another. Uh, I threw that up. I'll throw it up here for a second. Depending on the type of skill, reflex is what we're talking about right now. And then you roll another die 10 to see what happens on the fumble chart. We'll go. We'll do another video at some point here on the fumble chart. I should do that soon, actually. But um, yeah, so big chance of failure, big chance of a huge success. Just depends. Now there's some pretty cool other fumble charts out there. I've got my own that I work from as well. Uh, I'll have to get that put out at some point too. But again, that's another video. Um, we have, uh, well, let's see, we have automatic weapons. That's another thing we want to talk about as part of our ranged weapons, firearms, and so on. We have automatic weapons. Now, automatic weapons, you have a potential, a more, a higher potential for them to jam. Okay. Um, an automatic weapon, if it's just, uh, I don't, I don't have a graphic on this one, but if it's a very reliable weapon, and you roll a three or lower, that you roll a one, two, or three, then that weapon on your fumble chart, on your fumble, uh, then that weapon's going to jam. On a standard reliability weapon, on a five or less, it's going to jam. An unreliable weapon, on an eight or less, it'll jam. Okay? Big, much, much higher chance of, of it jamming. Now, this can be in addition to whatever happens on that fumble chart. That kind of depends on the ref, how they want to play it, and how they want to do it, right? But... That's a separate thing. If it's an automatic weapon you're dealing with, uh, you spe you specifically have that chance of it jamming in addition to whatever other fun stuff might happen on the fumble chart. Now, it does take, when you do have a jam like that, uh, it takes a die six rounds or turns. It says turns in a few places in the in the book, but we're, I, I always played it. We're not talking about full turns. Turn is 10 minutes. We're talking about, and the way I've always played it is uh, combat rounds. The die six rounds to unjam that weapon. Okay. Now, if you're firing in, if you're firing automatic weapons, you got a couple ways you can do this. You can do a three round, you can do a regular single shot, rate of fire single shot. You can do a three round burst, depending on the weapon, assuming it has that option. You can do fully automatic and dump the whole magazine, or you can do suppressive fire. Now, suppressive fire, I did a whole video just on the suppressive fire rule not too long ago. Uh, so you can go check that out for a suppressive fire run. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about the three-round burst here right now, though. Three-round burst. Most automatic weapons are going to have this. Depends on the weapon, if it's listed as in the description, or if your ref says yes, it did. Or if you have it modified. You find a tech, you have it, have it modified to have that option. The three-round burst is your automatic plus three at certain ranges. Okay, it depends how far away you are, whether or not you get this advantage. Um, the attack, it's one action, so that's your whole action. If you're going to take another action, you potentially have multiple action penalties, which is another video I've done as well <laughs> already. Uh, but if you're successful, if you hit your target number, you roll a die six divided by two, and that's how many rounds hit the target of the three you fired. Okay. Now, you can only, one limitation here, you can only use this against a single target. You can't do a three round burst and say you're going to target those three baddies over there. That's not, that doesn't work in these rules. You got to pick one single target. You're doing three round burst on that target. If you get, you get the plus three, assuming you're at, here it is, close or medium range. Uh, we're going to bring that, bring that slide back up because we have that. Where was that? Close or medium range. So if you're doing a rifle with a 400 meter range, and you are at between 100 and 200 meters or less from your target, then you can use the three on burst rule. Uh, assuming you hit your, you get the plus three, and assuming you hit target number, uh, you get a die six divided by two rounds actually hitting the target, and then you roll damage. So uh, based on how many rounds hit the target, so you roll your die six divided by two, you roll a six. Divided by two, all three rounds hit, you roll your damage three times. There you go. Three look three hit locations, three damage rolls, the whole thing. Now, full auto. Full auto with most all automatic weapons is is not an easy thing to control. 
if you're really good at it and you have really the right weapon it can be it can be pretty severe it can you can get within the area of effect but it's it's difficult it's it's tough when you especially the further away you get the further away you are from the target the more difficult it's going to be now uh, full auto weapons bounce around they're hard to control as i mentioned um if full auto is an option now it depends on the rate of fire of the weapon you got to look at the the description of the weapon the chart there i did a whole video on what those numbers mean how to read the codes for uh, weapons weapon codes i believe i called the video if full auto or a like a 30 round burst or 40 round burst or whatever is an option that's what we're talking about at close range every 10 rounds fired adds one to your attack roll so if you got a weapon i'm trying to remember like the finral i think is a 30 round burst uh so you would get a plus three to your attack roll every 10th round you get a plus one to your attack that's a close range now, medium range long and extreme ranges every 10 rounds fired you subtract one from your attack roll that's how extreme the difference of the effect of range can be on using a fully automatic weapon when you're close up it gives you a bonus because you're putting so many rounds in that dire in that general direction of your target that you have a much greater chance of hitting when you get further away the that cone so to speak gets so wide you just don't have much chance of hitting it reduces your chances of hitting right the way how do we determine how many rounds assuming you hit your target number so that's your your bonus and your your, your negative depending on your range how do you determine how many rounds hit the target for every round that hits the target um i lost on my notes here one second i'm sorry every point of success there we go i'm sorry i lost my notes lost my place okay i don't for the most part most all these videos i don't edit them i do the recording best i can i give you the real this is the real thing real me recording it i don't go in and try to cut stuff back out all right so here we go all right so that is that part now suppressive fire is the next thing on this list but i've got a whole nother video on suppressive fire so i'm not going to get into that in this one uh we also have uh some areas of unusual range weapon we've got air guns tasers some other stuff but i'm not going to cover those that's going to be a separate one also so uh i think we're going to call that on this one it's getting already getting to be a longer video we'll call it for this one thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i'll see you in the next one we finished the job but our story is just beginning Wake the fuck up, Samurai. We have a city to burn.